when I said God said, I want to be seen that the agenda is visibility. Somebody may be saying, but there are many churches. And I agree with you. But you see, the many churches were supposed to give voice to divine representation. But we have been appraised for accurate representation. Like in the days of Daniel, we have been weighed, we have been measured. And the feedback is that we have been found wanting. God said to us, I want to be seen. In one word, the agenda could be called visibility. A few of us must have wrestled with it because um, the numbers of churches have multiplied. But it looks as if everybody who can pray a little now begins to eye ministry. So that Jesus no longer suffers resistance when it comes to say, do the work. Because before Jesus sent men, men have started running. Are you with me? One of the things that actually break our heart, because I mean, I'm excited that everybody is doing ministry, is that we have found out that those that are being produced do not look like the caller. Jesus is the caller. He's the one who sits on the throne of administrations. So if you were called, it was Jesus that called you. Is somebody with me? If you go to, if you look at Mark, um, sorry, Matthew chapter 4, and it's repeated in Luke, it's repeated in Mark, you find out that each of the disciples had that experience where Jesus himself, in the days of his earthly existence, summoned them. He still performs that role in eternity. He still calls men. And in case you are at a loss that no, um, it ended with his earthly ministry, you will need to stray into Acts chapter 9 to find out that in the day that Saul of Tarsus was summoned, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Are you with me? So it's, it's a job that he carried into eternity. He's still performing it. If you have a call, it's Jesus that called you. In case you have never heard his voice before, then your call is false. And I'm not afraid to call your calling fake. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. When he calls and a man yields, he doesn't just give instructions. There is a measure of life that he gives you to be able to run. And that life is only hosted in him. Because ministry is supposed to be a continuation of what Jesus began to do and teach so the life that powered it foundationally is the life that still powered it. Whatever a man does that did not begin from that beginning in the face of God is death. I'm saying it is possible for Jesus to look at a church and say that you have a reputation for being alive but you are dead. What he's saying in essence is that you are active but I'm not your source. You will not know until you find out what that life was designed to produce. That the errand of that life at foundational principles was designed to produce a man like the one who gives the life. So everything that ministry has produced on the landscape, the excitement, the glamour, the prosperity, the possessions, the celebrities, the stars that ministry has produced are not a good token or are not tokens that help to validate that this job began from Jesus. The proof that it began from Jesus is the capacity of what a man is running to produce men like Jesus. His life produces his lookalikes. Are you with me? I went this route because when I said God said, I want to be seen that the agenda is visibility. Somebody may be saying, but there are many churches. And I agree with you. But you see, the many churches were supposed to give voice to divine representation. But we have been appraised for accurate representation. Like in the days of Daniel, we have been weighed, we have been measured. And the feedback is that we have been found wanting. So men were sent, men have labored, but the desired product has not been gotten. 
It may be why God will send other men and sometimes what he will do is that he will resummon some of the sent men back into the planning room so that he re-instructs them. And what you have been trying to do in three weeks is to be re-instructed. That before he sends you, there is a shape that your life is designed to have arrived in. You were designed to be fruitful. And in fruitfulness is that the life that he has put inside you yields after a certain sort. If you run when you have not become fruitful, you will find out after many years that your ability to subdue the earth and to replenish it will not work. So we will be many, but because our reproduction is in death, the world will continue on its course undisturbed. And even though a few were able to turn the whole world upside down, our millions will not affect a difference. That's the story of where we have arrived. And I can boldly say to you that that's the story of the Nigerian church. I do not know churches in too many nations. You know, I've not been gifted too much traveling privileges. We are not many that love him. We are not many that serve him. We are not many that have truly submitted to his lordship. We are not many that seek him as the end of our lives. To the many numbers, he's a means to our end. We design how we want to end and then we use him to achieve it. That's not the order. And so what he has done is that in the day that the church begins to seek to impact publicly, God has withdrawn us from the public. He has withdrawn us from out from body expressions. He has withdrawn us from soulish expressions. He has taken us back into our source where he first landed when he came. And that was your spirit. And on Sunday, I advertised to you that your spirit is actually a gift of fellowship with God. That's where divine life is first sensed. That your soul was designed to be able to furnish you with self-awareness. It says your soul is a student. And the consciousness of your soul is built into what it has been taught. Your body is actually supposed to be a gift of contact with the visible world. But the body by the error of Adam, because your body is open to being beguiled by the enemy, can assume the shape of a teacher and it begins to teach your soul so that that man becomes sensual, one who lives off his senses. The spirit wakes him up in the morning and by instruction says a season of fasting. But he walks out and then his nose picks fresh bread. You know, like you pass in front of Danjuma and then they do bread and popcorn. Are you with me? So, even though those meals are incompatible, you can begin to, to crave for them. And then it instructs your pocket. You can even convert your offering into buying fresh bread. Some of those loaves of bread are not really eating. By the time he arrives at home, he says, ah, is here my prepared home. So the bread is just there. After a few days, he spoils. But I'm saying that that man is controlled. Or like a brother who is coming to church and he's singing his way, and then a damsel passes. I have seen men literally change their direction of travel to follow the damsel. He's a sensual man. There can be tongues on his mouth but he's not a slave of the spirit and Jesus cannot do much with him. He's seated and he's beginning to prepare a sermon because a pastor can also be sensual. And then he has finished his sermon and just wants to ventilate his spirit a little. And then he's trying to look for a sermon on YouTube. The power of God, that's what he's preaching on. His notes are complete, but he wants to be stared. Maybe he's looking for a song by our brother Teofilos Sunday or Dusio Yekon or Abio Jomo. And then he now finds something on YouTube. And he lacks the strength of spirit to be able to stay on his search. And then he now goes to find out, ah! What is raving now is this thing. 
and he becomes so affected that when he comes to church he can no longer stay on what the spirit has told him to do he becomes a preacher of hearsays and that's what fills it unfortunately it has affected both old and young in the faith everybody comes to preach i heard somebody say i heard somebody say like the voice of the spirit has gone silent our churches are littered with sensual leaders that's where we have arrived so jesus is saying can we start at your spirit again understand that your spirit was quickened because you acknowledged my lordship are you with me it means that that quickening was to give expression to my lordship i am not just a savior i'm a controller as a matter of fact according to the mandate with which we were saved there is no aspect of it that advertises Jesus as a savior. I know when you gave your life to Christ, you said I accept you as my personal Lord and savior. The word personal was not there in the Bible. But it's okay because it's a personal entrance. Are you with me? Okay, I'm disturbing your heart. Me, I'm burdened. Jesus must win. We don't have a future as a church in winning if Jesus has not won. Are you with me? Our strength is in the fact that we have been prevailed upon and it is only on the strength of being prevailed upon that we can prevail. What you were designed to call him and what he is as an opener to you is that he's your Lord. Maybe I need to add another scripture. It is that as you have accepted the Lord Jesus, continue also in him. It means if you met him as a Lord in the beginning, your journey must be sustained in acknowledging him as Lord. And I said to us two weeks ago, I said every opportunity to make a choice, to say a word, to carry out an activity is actually a test of your submission to Jesus. If you will live by him or you will live from your senses. The things that form your prayer points because sensual men pray you suddenly woke up and felt that ah will i ever buy a car will i ever buy a car jesus give me a car we need to ask you did the spirit burden you for a car or because you saw pastor or me driving in a g wagon you see smiling you see you see the, you see the way even pastor did pastor did meanwhile i don't think the holy spirit has discussed a g wagon with you before it means it is possible to desire something that the Lordship of Jesus is not advertising to you. There are verses in scriptures that strange men have manipulated. They tell you whatsoever you ask when you pray. Jesus made that statement to people who understood his Lordship. So there they they were givings that were already in place before whatsoever defines your unknown. Whatsoever is part of a defined set and what defines it is not a list of items what defines it is the lordship of jesus a servant has no will he lives by allocation what did i say a servant has no will he lives by allocation